Hey guys, it's Tarkhan back with another video. And uh, before I get started on this one, I'd like you to take a second if you haven't already and please hit the subscribe button. You know where it is right down there. And uh, I'm going to give you a second to do that. Okay, that's all you get. All right. Uh, this one is about healing. And it's in response to a comment that was left on one of my videos a little while back by War Violet. Um, and War Violet writes, Could you do a video on self-compassion and healing after an actual breakup? Well, I'm doing one now, and I hope it's the one you're looking for. Um, for me, I started to realize while I did in fact manifest him back and we are communicating, excellent. Our communication is rather shallow on the surface simply because I'm still hurting from my breakup. I never gave myself time to actually focus on me and heal me. And that's why I've had so much resistance and, hot, and he was blowing hot and cold because I am blowing hot and cold on my own emotional state and trying to white knuckle him back into my life. Instead of beating myself up for it now, I'm simply allowing myself to heal. Are you allowing yourself to heal? What I am truly feeling. Face it, stare it in the face, and simply love it instead of hitting it with a baseball and burying it because it's there no matter what. My subconscious self is saying, yeah, I know you want this thing, that's great. However, you tripped on a rock and have this huge gash on your leg and you're not tending to the wound. Well, how do you tend to a wound? I mean, if you have a gash on your leg or you've cut your finger or something like that, what do you do? Well, you put some neosporin on it or a little alcohol, so you clean it out a little bit, and then you put a bandage on it, right? And then what do you do after that? How do you tend to it after that? Um, do you talk to it? Do you take it out for coffee? Do you feed it snacks? I mean, um, I want you to think about something here because you're, you're still in a state of healing, right you're 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 not white knuckling your uh, your ex back anymore but you're white knuckling the healing process now so you've seen the you've replaced the problem of your ex in your mind a problem not being or behaving in the way that you prefer and you're now using the healing as an obstacle right now you're focused you're trying to white knuckle yourself out of this pain but how do, how does a how does a leg heal how does any part of your body heal after it's suffered some kind of trauma or wound it simply heals itself doesn't it just with time and with your sort of yes you give some attention to it yes you you dress it right and you change the bandage maybe once a day maybe you kind of stay off that part of your body maybe you favor the other leg for a while or something like that right that's fine maybe you even lie down a little bit and take it easy okay Sure, I can see that that would be um, how you might tend to a wound, but that's really just tending to yourself. That's really just becoming a cooperative component in the healing process, isn't it? Because the leg is healing itself. It knows how to heal itself. Your body knows exactly what to do to heal a gash on your leg. You don't need to tend to your body to do that, right? But you do have to be a cooperative component in the process. But how do you be a co cooperative component in the process? So like I explained, maybe if you have a big wound on your leg, you kind of favor the other one, or you stay off that leg for a little while. So what are you doing there? You're taking it easy, aren't you? But are you constantly looking at the leg? Are you constantly checking the wound? Are you taking the dressing off every five minutes? Because that's not going to heal, is it? You keep taking the dressing or the bandage off every couple of minutes to look and see if it's healed or try to somehow do something else to make it heal faster because now you're focused on how it's not healing fast enough. So you can't get on with your day. You can't go to work. You can't go ride your bike. You can't go swimming. You can't do the things you like. You can't have the things you want because now you got to wait for that damn leg to heal. Do you see what I'm getting at here with? <laughs> do you see what I'm getting at with this? Um, it's you're still you're you're still kind of offering a lot of resistance about the process. Except now you've kind of said, well, I'm not offering so much resistance about the boyfriend situation or the ex-boyfriend situation directly. But now your resistance is focused on healing. So you've kind of we tend to do this, right? We tend to do this because we're waiting for the perfect time and the perfect moment for something to come in because. We still don't believe that what we want is appropriate or that we're ready for it, right? Or that we can have it. So we have to now create all these conditions that have to sort of sort themselves out or we have to sort them out. I have to, I can't really be in this relationship in the way I want to be because I have to heal first, okay? 
So, or I can't have the person I want in my life because I have to be rich first, or I'm not good looking enough. So first I got to lose weight and then I can start dating and that kind of thing. That's not really loving yourself because part of loving yourself is accepting yourself. And part of accepting yourself is to accept yourself exactly as you are. <clears throat> and that includes having this wound and this gash on your leg and having this pain that includes accepting it. And when you're loving it, that means you're accepting it. So you're coming from the, a good direction here. You're kind of, you're, you're sort of scratching the surface of this thing, but you're still pushing against the pain part of it. You're still pushing against not being healed. And that's what you're focused on. And what do we say? Like attracts like. So if you're practicing the vibration of healing, then you're always going to be in a mode of healing, but you're not practicing the vibration of being healed or allowing the healing to take place. Right? So you're not white knuckling the boyfriend situation anymore, but now you're white knuckling the healing process because somewhere in your mind, you've still convinced yourself or you have convinced yourself that you can't have the boyfriend in the way that you want until you've healed. So, well, when's that going to happen? Right? So now you think that to heal in order to heal, I have to tend to the wound. I have to talk about it. I have to stare it in the face. You're going to stare it in the face. Is that going to make it heal any faster? No, of course not. Like, like, like attracts like. That's how this law of attraction thing works. That's how this manifesting thing works. It's about energy. And right now, you're not tending to the wound. You're feeding the wound. That's what you're doing, okay? I want you to be aware of that. I'm not trying to pick on you, but I want you to see, and like with all of your comments and a lot of my coaching clients, it's, it's easy to kind of go, here's what I'm writing, and a lot of people aren't really that aware of their own behavior and, or or where they're coming from with their words, right? And I do the same thing. I do it all the time. It's not a big deal. But step one in this whole thing is to become aware of where you are with your vibration and your focus. Because oftentimes we think we're focused on healing, but we're actually focused in the opposite direction. And I see that as a result and a consequence of this kind of culture that we live in, this sort of psychotherapy, talk about it, talk about it till you blue in the face kind of culture. And I've said this before, right? I don't really believe in talk therapy. I mean, I think it can be beneficial to a lot of people. I'm never going to discourage people from doing it. But I want to be aware of like most of the time people go to a therapist for what, 20, 30 years. I mean, if, if it, it's actually helping them, why would they need to go for that long? <laughs> it's likewise, you know, if I'm doing what I'm doing here efficiently, uh, and most of you, if you're my coaching clients or even watching these videos, if you're going to follow what I'm saying or listen to what I'm saying, or if I'm saying it well enough, <clears throat> you're not going to need me anymore at some point. You're not going to need people like me at some point. So the point is not for me to perpetuate the state of where you are constantly having to look at my videos or buy my coaching packages or things like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So likewise, therapy should be working for you. If it's not working for you, healing should be working for you. If it's not working for you, then you're not quite approaching it in the same way. And what's the best way to really overcome a problem is to not think about it. <laughs> and I know this is so counterintuitive. This is so counter to what people, what we've been trained to. And I know it's so, I know viscerally it does not feel correct. It doesn't feel right when I say that. And believe me, I still have that kind of reaction to things, right? This sort of acculturation, this, this, uh, the way we've been socialized, the way we've been taught and trained from the time we're in the cradle is so deeply ingrained, it's so strong, it's probably always going to be there to some degree, okay? So, but here we are now, we're trying to approach things from a different perspective. And a lot of this, like, what you're doing here is you're identifying a problem. And the problem in your mind is that you're not healed. And, and then the further problem is related to that is that you feel you can't really be in the kind of relationship you want to be in with your boyfriend, your ex-boyfriend, unless you heal first. So now you're not pushing so much for the boyfriend to behave differently, but now you're pushing for the wound to heal. And really all you're doing is you're feeding it. You keep opening it back up by talking about it, by staring it in the face, and even by giving it love. Um, it sounds nice. It seems like that might be the right thing to do. But really, when you're doing that, you're, you're giving it more energy. When you're giving it love, you're giving the wound energy. You're not giving the healed state energy, right? So a good way to, to kind of counter that is to go to the state in your mind of being healed. Let the wound tend to itself. It's going to heal itself. 
All right, your leg, the gash in your leg is going to heal itself. When you cut your finger, it's going to heal itself. Put a Band-Aid on it. There's nothing wrong with that. And yes, it's good to acknowledge the state that you're in. But here's where we tend to go wrong. We acknowledge our unwanted state, our unwanted circumstances, but then we talk about them ad infinitum. We keep staying in that state of the problem and that awareness of the problem. By doing that, we keep feeding the problem and it doesn't go away. And then we wonder, why isn't it going away? Why isn't it healing? I ta I'm talking about it all the time. I'm feeding it all the time. I'm thinking about it all the time. Shouldn't it be going away? No, because now you understand in this whole law of attraction thing, when you feed something with energy, it grows, it perpetuates, it stays, right? So you're not healing your wound. You're letting it fester. You're kind of letting it be a wound. And it's always going to be in the state of a wound and being a wound if that's what you're going to do, if you're going to keep thinking about it, if you're going to stare it in the face, if you feel you have to wait for good things to come in your life until this wound is healed up. You know, do the things that you love anyway. Listen, you're, the first line in your, well, the second line in your comment is we're communicating. Think about this. Think about the perspective you're coming from here. I started to realize, well, I did in fact manifest him back and we are communicating. Our communication is rather shallow and on the surface. You're already defining a problem here. And actually, so many of my clients and so many of the people watching this video, God, they wish they were in that mode. They wish they were, I manifested him back and we're communicating. Awesome. I, God, I wish I had that. So you've already done something here. You've already manifested him back. You're already communicating with him. So you're identifying, but you're identifying problems because you're being problem oriented. This is not being solution oriented. You should be focusing on the fact that, hey, I manifested him back. This is awesome. This proves to me that I can do this. This shows me my power. I really am capable of manifesting and attracting whatever I want. So then if some condition in, the, in the today or whatever or in the current way things are isn't pleasing to me, then I can just use the same principles. I apply the same principles that I did when I manifested him back. In fact, I'd love to get another comment from you knowing, hearing from you how you did manifest him back. How did you come into communication again with him? right? Because that's what we're talking about here. And that would actually be a success story. And what I'm reading out of this is that there's a success story hiding in your comment, but the whole comment is about a problem. And the problem, and then you're asking me, how do I get rid of the problem when your whole problem, your whole comment is about a problem that you've sort of encircled your success story with. You've kind, of, you've kind of strangled out your success story here and the positive thing that's happened, which is you have him back and you're communicating with this problem because you're being problem oriented, right? And, that, and that's, that's due to a habit and we all have that habit. Sometimes being problem oriented, and like I said, we've been conditioned to do so. We've been socialized to do so. We've been trained to do so our whole lives that it's difficult to undo that thinking. Even in the face of something very good, even in the face of something very wanted, something we've wanted for a long time and now we've manifested it, our tendency, our habit is to go back to identifying problems around that now, okay? We're communicating, I have him back, but he's blowing hot and cold. So think about this, oh, I have to heal first, right? So now you're, if you're focused on the healing part, if you're trying to, you're white knuckling the healing part, if you're trying to stare it in the face, I'm staring my wound in the face, it's not gonna heal any faster, right? It's not going to heal any faster. You have to get beyond the state of being wounded. You have to get beyond the state of the problem. You can, you can identify the problem. It's okay to identify the problem, but that takes about 30 seconds, all right? Ugh, I'm, I have a lot of pain around this still. But then you don't think about it all day. I've said this before. You know, people can say, I had a terrible day. And then if you ask them, so what made your day so terrible? Was it the whole day terrible? Or was it maybe one incident that took five minutes that you didn't like that, that was terrible, but then you thought about it all day? And then as you thought about it all day, you didn't see all the other good things that actually made up your day, right? The people smiling, the nice things that happened, the easy things that happened, okay? So this is, this is so much about changing your perspective. And I keep saying this and I keep trying to drive this home. So much of this manifesting stuff is about changing and switching your perspective. And if you do so even just a little bit, you're on your way to something better pretty quickly. It can happen pretty quickly, okay? So don't focus so much on the healing or the wound or the pain. I have to do this first to be happy. Again, you're putting an obstacle in your way, but why? It doesn't need to be there, and it really isn't that much of an obstacle. You're making a big deal out of it, and it's not that big of a deal.
So, and I want to actually point something else out because this is very much, and, and this comes very much from Abraham Hicks. And those of you who are familiar with Abraham will understand this metaphor of the stream, right? So a big part of what Abraham says is, um, everything you want is upstream. If you consider that life is sort of like a stream, right? So, so current moves, no, I'm sorry, everything you, everything you want is downstream, unless you're on the Nile, but that's another thing. Uh, we'll ignore that one. But pretty much every river, right, the current flows downstream, and everything you want is downstream. And if you put a boat in the water at any point in the stream, right, and you don't have to paddle at that point, it will just drift towards its destination. It'll drift downstream naturally. So that's pretty much like going with the flow, right? So in this case, going with the flow and going downstream with your wound with your healing aspect, what you want is, in a, is to be in a state of being healed. What you want is to feel healed. So what do you do? You put your boat in the water and you let it go. You go with the flow. So you don't tend to the wound. You don't think about it. You don't talk about it. You don't even really see it as an obstacle. You just say, yep, I have a wound. I have some pain. But you know what? My body, my soul, my inner being, my heart, my spirit know how to heal themselves. I don't really have to be part of that process. The only way that I'm going to be part of that process is to just kind of maybe stay off it a little while. Maybe favor the other leg, right? Maybe take it easy for a little while. And that's going downstream. That's going with the flow. But if you're thinking about, how am I going to heal this faster? I need to heal this first. How do I heal it? How do I stare it in the face? I'm going to stare it in the face. Then you're going upstream. And when you're going upstream, you're paddling. And then you wear yourself out. You use up all your energy. You might eventually get to where you want but really what you're doing is you're going to get there all tattered, right? That's how you're going to arrive at your destination. You want to be easy about these things. And that's, the, that's true for anything. Remember that anything right now, anything that you want is something that you're trying to manifest, something that you can manifest. So healing, the state of being healed, is a manifestation that you're after. So manifest it in the same way that you manifest anything else that you want. It's the same principles apply right? So you've already manifested your boyfriend back. You're communicating with him. You've manifested that. You're acknowledging that you manifested the fact that you're kind of blowing hot and cold. That's fine. But here's the thing. If you understand and recognize that his behavior towards you is a reflection of your behavior, the same behavior, then how do you change that? You change yourself, right? So it's the same thing. If you're hurting all the time, don't you think that might be because you're constantly thinking about hurting, right? So so yes, acknowledge your wound, okay? <clears throat> and then do the things that you love. Think about the things that you love. Be easy about this. Let it heal itself. And don't think that you have to, it has to heal first before you can have all your goodies and all the things that you want, okay? The, again, that's problem-oriented thinking. That's not solution-oriented thinking. Fuck it. It's just so you have a gash on your leg. Who cares? So what, okay? It's really not that big a deal. Uh, it's just pain. And you're good at it. We're all good at it. We've practiced it. You know, when we're five years old or three years old and we fall on our butt, we start crying. Is it because of the pain of it or is it because of the shock of that, right? So that's another thing to, th to think about. So maybe it's the shock of what you had been through or what you had perceived, right? A breakup or something like that. But look, it's not, is it really that painful or is it really that big a deal? You just get up again. And then the next time you fall, you understand what falling is about. And you go, eh, it's not a big deal. So I fell. So I just get up again. Okay, I cut my leg, so I just dress it, I put something on it, some bandage, and then I just let it heal, and I go about my day, I go about my business. Maybe I take it easy for a little while, and in time it will heal. But in the meantime, I don't have to give up the things I want, I don't have to give up feeling good, I don't have to give up thinking in a positive direction, I don't have to give up relaxing and, and participating in a joyful way in this experience called life that I've chosen for myself. Okay, Don't make it such a big deal. All right. Don't white knuckle the healing process. So I know that sounds like I've been a little harsh here, um, but um, I've, I, it's important sometimes, I think, if I'm going to do this effectively, is to point out to you guys, sometimes in a little bit of a harsh way, sometimes by pulling your leg a little bit, um, but always lovingly and always with patience. Um, <laughs> because I understand, listen, I've been through this process. I still go through it, all right? It's not that it will ever go away. It's not that you're ever going to be perfect at manifesting. You're just going to get better and better at it. You're going to get better and better at it to the point that it's going to get easier. And these obstacles, these problems are going to be easier for you to deal with. You're just not going to see them as a big deal anymore, right, down the road. But the way to begin to move in the direction of that type of thinking is to really start now, is to start recognizing and looking at 
how you're treating the things you're perceiving as a problem, how much attention, how much focus you're feeding those things. You're feeding it vibrationally. You're feeding your pain, okay? Move to the space and start moving to the space in your mind and in your feeling of where the wound is already healed or, or where maybe there's not a wound to, be, to begin with. How would you behave then? How would you act then? How would you think and feel then? What would you do? What kind of things would you be doing if this wasn't even an issue in your mind? That's the person you want to become. That's who you become in your mind. That's who you become energetically and vibrationally. Okay? So move beyond the whole healing thing. Let the healing take place. Don't interfere with it. You interfere with it when you keep taking off the bandage and keep looking at it. I'm going to stare at the wound. That's not going to make it heal any faster. That's just going to make you hyper aware of that there's a wound. Okay? Let it heal. It'll heal on its own. In the meantime, you tend to yourself. You take care of yourself. And how do you love yourself? Listen, you say here, um, would self-compassion and simply tending to your wound and healing yourself also raise your vibration? Yes, well, tending to the wound, I've covered that part. You don't need to tend to the wound, okay? You don't need to feed it. You don't need to take it out to coffee. You don't need to talk to it, okay? You put some dressing on it, and then you leave it alone. That's what you do. What is the doctor going to tell you? Don't leave it alone. Don't do anything. Don't poke at it. Okay, well, I've put a bandage on it, leave it alone, it'll heal. Just don't touch it, you know, favor the other leg, whatever, that kind of thing. Um, healing yourself, well, that's, again, let the healing part take place on its own. You know how to heal. Your body knows how to heal. Your soul and heart and mind know how to heal on their own. Let them do what they know how to do. Now, how do you love yourself more? You do it by allowing the healing part to take place and then being easy on yourself, and then going and doing the things that you love. Engage in the kind of thinking that you love. Engage in the kind of activities that you love. Go hang out with your friends. Hell, enjoy and celebrate the fact that you've manifested your ex back, that you're communicating. Don't pick it all apart, every little communication. Oh, now he's hot. Now he's cold. Okay? Just enjoy the fact that it's happening. Get in that boat and don't paddle. Let it carry you downstream to where you want to be. And that's all you got to do. Enjoy the boat ride, okay? You're going to get there. All right? Don't spend so much energy paddling or trying to get there faster. Just relax. Let it carry you there and enjoy the view in the meantime, okay? And while you're at it, please write us about how you manifested your ex back. Let's talk about that instead, all right? Okay. So, that was my little... Uh, six cents words, my five bucks worth. I don't know. Um, anyway, I hope that answers your question. I hope that that helps you a little bit and all of you watching. And um, again, I'm going to say this. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, please do so now. Um, if you want to leave me a tip, there's two links down at the bottom in the description box, one for PayPal, one for Cash App. Any amount is appreciated. Um, it helps me create more content and hopefully down the road get better equipment and have better content and that kind of thing. Um, also, if you want coaching with me, there's a link also in the description box where you can find out all about that. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.